We are back on the water damage. We're heading to the boat yard. The new motors are here. A pair of twin 425s going on there. We're gonna sell these 350s here. There's a lot of hours on them. There we go. We're good. So we got some hours on these motors. 4,433 on the port motor and 4,474 on the starboard motor. But they're still running. So we're gonna sell them as a running pair, hopefully. boats on blocks Chris is working on it from Caribbean so we're gonna de-rig it you know we're gonna save all the rigging because Dawson wants the controls so he wants to buy those and uh, these motors will be for sale that's what they look like this one here is running good this motor here it did have a little oil leak in it so I believe the oil pump there is leaking and there may be a leak in a cam seal up here we think so it runs, but it needs some work. But 4,400 hours on, so we got our time out of them and uh, a little bit of work. You know, sometimes people get eight or 10,000 hours out of outboard, so you can get a long time. But 350s are coming off, the 425s are going on. They pressure wash the bottom. Um, we might do a touch up on the bottom paint too. Gotta get that stuff up there. The wrap's gonna come off too. So we're gonna work on that. The new one's got the electric steering, right? Yeah, everything's integrated. Okay, cool. So the new ones have the integrated steering that we have on the 42 Freeman, which is uh, super nice. So, so the motors are almost de-rigged there. They're cleaning up some of that stuff. You can see they got the battery cables up there and all that. Cleaning up that stuff. And I don't know if they're gonna get them off today. I hope so, but not holding my breath. Um, but we're working on the wrap removal. So Captain Danny's here, he's been running the boat there. So the old wrap is coming off, peeling it off little by little here. It'll be that nice, uh, it's like an ice blue, so it'll be blue underneath there. We got, we'll show you guys some of that stuff too, a little, little time lapse, so enjoy. Is it hot on your hands or no? Yeah, I mean, I'm not really having to use too much heat to... Gotcha. I just remember last time trying to peel that stuff up and we... Like melting our hands. So it took about 20 minutes. Danny had the heat gun, we're pulling it together. Got the ladder up there, got most of it up there. And this sometimes the wraps come off easy, but this boat has caught a lot of swordfish and you can see all the scratches in here. And most of them are from swordfish. So when you're pulling it off, it peels off in pieces. Work on the other side next. And as long as we get that up there, that'll be a uh, good progress. And probably gonna drain the oil out of these motors. The oil is coming out. And since the battery cables are disconnected from the motor, you know, we didn't have power to hook the pump there, but Luckily, Chris had this little boost thing there, little power pack, so got the cables going to that, draining the oil, and it should be good. And we just want to drain the oil because, you know, if the motor is sitting vertical in the rack, it'll be fine, but if we lay them sideways, you know, put them in a truck bed or a trailer, someone picks them up, we don't want the oil leaking out, so pump that on out, and uh, we'll check the lower units too and see how they look and get these things up for sale here in the next week. And they won't be worth a ton. They'll be worth something, though. They're still running, and this one, We'll need some work over here. Um, definitely an oil leak on it, so we'll see what happens. Where's Mike when we need him? Oh, yeah. Did he have the tiki? I'm pretty sure he's at the tiki. He's, he's probably or sleeping. He's at the tiki, probably. You never have to worry about me taking your job. <laughs> <laughs> it's February 1st here, and it's like 200, it was 100 and something degrees here. Sweat is pouring in my eyes, but oil on that side was good. Just drained out a little bit, check it. So that was good, no water in there. Now let's check this one. We just wanna make sure, still good, no water. It's black, 
So back on that one goes too. Put the screen back on there. And okay, so we got that side D-wrap, you know, 95% it off. This one here, 90% up too, maybe 95%. And it looks surprisingly good underneath the wrap. So they do uh, they do protect the hull there. The other side was a lot tougher because all the swordfish mark scratches, you usually fish on that port side of the boat because we have an east wind typically, you know, east, southeast wind. So we fish on this side a little bit, but this side came off much easier. And we just kind of come here and get these last little pieces on here, a little bit of trimming. There's some hard water stuff underneath here. So this has not been cleaned or acid washed in a long time. So we'll clean that. We'll get some fresh bottom paint on the boat and it should be good to go. And we'll just get these last little few pieces the next couple of days. I'm gonna swordfish tomorrow. Um, and they're gonna start hanging the motor tomorrow. Then they gotta put new uh, helms in there for the steering wheels downstairs, upstairs, plus runs new cables and wires, new harnesses, and all that stuff. There's like the old Optimus steering smart sticks there. So we'll hopefully sell that for a couple bucks and we'll see how it turns out. I wanna show you guys a little bit up here before we go home for the day we'll get that over there just in case it rains and get wet but so they're gonna remove all the old steering pumps here so they got the little tackle tray out of here you know the drawers and that's the old optimus steering system in there so that's gonna be taken out they got the lines disconnected there they'll remove all that stuff and this will be the new integrated yamaha steering the electric steering on uh those new 425 so this is all out here you know that hash there and they'll get all that going we're gonna get new helms here I believe we're gonna get a new screen up here as well. And then some new stuff in the tower. So it'll be a big uh, a big change. So we'll have to get in here and do some work too. But we're excited about it. You know, I can't wait to see what the boat pushes. And this was my first Freeman, got it January, 2016. January 2nd came down, Scott and them drove it down there years back. And uh, he got there late at night, I think about 11 o'clock at night. And we put in the water the next morning about seven or 8 a.m. and ran around because let's go sword fishing i was like hey we ain't going sword fishing just for you know a couple hours to come back down let's go fishing we can all day because now let's go fishing for half a day and i had never had a boat with speed before where you could run you know 35 knots to going out there i was used to going 15 to 20 knots we ran out there and on the second drop we caught like a 247 pound swordfish or something like that and that was fun uh that was a long time ago so here it is calling it a day about 5 p.m so we will, uh, I'm fishing tomorrow, so I may not get everything on video. I'm going to try to get the guys to film a little bit about the 425s getting hung on there. But we will show you guys, you know, the next few days, at least when the motors get on there and all that stuff. Craig, don't mess it up. <laughs> Sometimes I only get one shot. No guarantees. It's his 45th birthday from the Florida Keith Brewing Company. He needs a swordfish. The buoy is laid over. You got a reel, Craig. <laughs> Mike's rigging up here. Mike's rigging up some baits here too, you guys. Could be the one. We got a slacker, guys. He's carrying the weight up, it looks like. See it land sideways there. Swordfish though, first drop, first right. drift. He didn't get skunked. Go on, buddy. Low and steady wins the race. Drift number two, got another swordfish on. I see a small, hit the bait a lot of times before I finally ate it. But uh, hopefully stays on there for us. There's a big moon right now, so I mean, hopefully there'll be a big fish here sometime today. He finally swallowed it. Yeah. Don't mess it up. Oh, 
Another small fish. You guys want it or no? Legal? Hooked in the peck fin. Reach, lean, reach. Ah, come there on, monkey arms. Good job. See what happens here. A little bit of luck could be number four for the day. Not a small fish, kind of cookie cutter size there. But uh, it's good action. So, oh, here we go. Wait. Yep. So, tell me, uh, do I back off the thing or anything? Oh, he's right in the tail. You know my vote. Gaff it, Timmy! All right. The biggest one we've got all day. That's your gun, stab it. Stop it. You want to fill it there? Yeah, it's not very big. All the way off? Yeah, look at how that thing's hooked. Hooked in the tip of the tail, wrapped around, lassoed. Rip his tail. Yeah, you can't back to the back. I'll walk you back. I gotta listen to that. No. Look at that. Look at that. In the tail through there. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> Get him, boy. Look at this thing's in a knot. Dad, look at that other thing's hooked there. Oh, oh. Holy smokes. Watch, he's gonna spit that hook. Get it on the deck. Get it on the deck. You want it on the deck? Yeah. Look at skin came off of him. Oh, I got a rubber off. Hook in the tail. Well, the motors are off. We went sword fishing, had a great day. We got four swordfish. Um, and we're waiting on the 425s to get hung here, so we'll see how they turn out here in the next uh, week. But you can see down there in the bilge. Got this stuff here. Gonna do a touch up a little bit of fiberglass work back in the back there before they hang them. It is de-wrapped now. Courtesy of Danny. Oh, the inside's looking good too. This was all rust spotted up here and all yellow. So we got some muriatic acid there. A little bit of water to dilute it and got it cleaned up pretty good. You can see, so this is what it looked like before that yellow in there. So we're just acid washing that and cleaning it. Hopefully, you, yes, I'm sure you guys can see that. So clean, not clean. And that's heavy duty stuff in there. Those hard water stands been there for years. Yeah, because it's I don't remember the last time we washed the inside of the boat. There's probably a year or two, I'm sure. But picking away some of this stuff, and there's a few scratches in there. Boat's caught quite a few fish, but uh, yeah, there's some bill marks in there. Probably a gaff mark or two where the gaff hooked it in there, but. We're back on the X3. We went fishing yesterday, just for a few hours in the afternoon. Hooked a big wahoo, screamed a bunch of line, started shaking his head, and then the hook pulled. Right after Andrew said, I can't wait to eat this Wahoo, then we lost him. But we did catch a blackfin tuna, and you can see the fish box has got plenty of blood in it from yesterday. And today's the day to clean it out. But we just got a brand new product from Blue Wave. It's their new fish box cleaner, and uh, it's reef and ocean friendly, kills all the odors, and uh, all that good stuff. So we're gonna use it. We're gonna drain that fish box first, get all the blood out of there, pick these ballyhoos out, and then we're gonna put the new product to the test and see how it works. Nothing like sticking your hand in some Kool-Aid. That all drained out. We're gonna pull these ballyhoos out now. Deal with those after that, but got some guts in there from the black tuna we caught. Got all that stuff. So we're just gonna spray it out the best we can with the hose. And we're gonna get that fish box clean in there and uh, give it a nice scrub in. We'll see how it turns out, you know, and how it smells there. They say you can use it like on live oils and hatches and, you know, coolers and all that stuff too. So we'll, uh, Get this going and we'll report back on how it turns out. It does smell good. I'm just gonna hit this whole thing here and spray it in there and go get the scrub brush and start scrubbing. And probably the best thing is that all their products are biodegradable and they don't hurt the environment and we definitely do enough damage to the environment. So, kind of nice when you can use a product that doesn't hurt everything. Grab and pot there. Okay, right here. We'll uh, report back, so we'll let that drain. There's a little bit of bait fish that with that tuna eight coming out there. You can see those little like tiny squids or fish or something. That's draining slowly. I think we're gonna be in good shape. So we'll double check uh, tomorrow or the next day and really see you know, what it smells like, if it smells like fish and all that. Cause you can imagine having that Kool-Aid in there, that fish blood, brine, the plug being in there and that valley who that uh, it wouldn't smell good. So 
we'll see what happens here you guys stay tuned anyhow we got some transom plates here and these are going to go on the inside of the transom when i hang the 425s just to help uh take a little pressure off the bolt holes there and spread the load there so these are going on the inside like that hopefully the holes line up they do there but Dawson's is going to come wax it and buff it he said so that'll be good we're just picking up the last couple little pieces uh of the wrap here piece by piece and just where i had cuts and tears in it and scratches from the dock and swordfish especially <laughs> they like to cut it up so this is a razor blade we thought peeling the wrap off was the hard part it wasn't getting all these little pieces off is the pain in the butt part right there because you got to use the razor blade to help kind of scrape them off there like that if you had a long fingernail that would work too so i've been doing this for almost an hour and a half this morning the other side is 99 percent done and this one's 95 percent done on this side but the little detail thing here getting all this stuff off where the wrap is tearing is kind of the tricky part so doing it like that you know using the razor blade and you probably hear that buffer in the background that's dawson over there we'll go show you him he has volunteered to help wax the boat which is good so i'll show you that because we want to get a nice coat of wax on here before uh it goes back in the water here in the next week whenever it goes dawson how's it going good i made it from here we started in the sunny side and we're working our way back because we got this behemoth next to us for shade. Follow the sun is providing the shade. <laughs> Coincidence. What a, what a but we're name. losing the shade. Yeah, but... So you already waxed up there? No, this is just compound. Okay, gotcha. So I compounded from here because Nick was, Nick was staying here doing what he usually does, talking to me in the way. I did have the razor blade. Yeah. Pick yeah, him. Okay, so you're doing compound first and wax after? Yeah, I mean, it had the wrap on it, but just to knock off anything and to make sure the wax sticks good because it's probably not gonna come out of the water for a, a little months. while yeah could be so we gotta make sure she's protected and hopefully they show up here and hang these 425s today need some work and there's a fiberglass guy gonna do a little bit of work and close these old holes in there some fiberglass try to match the gel coat dawson what do we got here um well we had a stiff bristle brush and we were up under the ball. I was up under the hole. Nick's up under the hole. And as he's scrubbing, the ass is just running down. So we got to have a way to hold the acid a little better. So. And we had, to, we had to go to full acid back here. We didn't dilute it because these hard water stains are so bad in the back of the tunnel back here. And it worked. Um, that he just put muriatic acid on there. Made a spray bottle out of that bottle there. Smart water, but don't drink it. And you can see where it works. So you can see where it turns kind of that greenish yellow. And that's still what's up there, which the diluted stuff helped get some of it, but not good enough. So we got to put it on there direct, and then we're going to use that brush to help smear it around. So Dawson's going to show us how to do it real quick. Oh, Nicholas, <laughs> this was supposed to be your job. Where's Beanie? Where's Bean Peo? Bean Peo is gone Peo, yeah. not here Peo. I thought you were going to spray it on there. And then do it. Yeah, but then I'm gonna spray it on there. But you gotta wet the rag, otherwise okay, rag. Put, your, ma put your mask on. I got my mask, and I got my safety goggles today. Yeah. <laughs> See the range on that, Nick? That was good spray. Ah, right in the eyes. Oh, look at the coverage. Is it working? Oh, yeah. Working good? Coverage. <laughs> look at it working. <laughs> <laughs> Highly advise wearing a mask or a breathing apparatus if you guys do that. <laughs> Dawson, get out of there quick. We're looking pretty good here. And it smells good.
So Dawson got a lot of wax on the inside. Beanie was helping get some stickers off and all that. We'll show you some of those clips, but got the heat gun there, getting some of them stickers off, but the inside's shining. That was looking pretty good. So they got the fiberglass patches in here. They're gonna get some gel coat on top of that. Got that one over there. Oh, we've got a new motor here. There's a 425 right here. Hopefully it's going on soon. It's unveiling the beauty. That thing's big. Look at that thing. Holy moly. Dawson, have you done any work on these before? Yeah, Piper! Yeah. That thing's gonna get a lot of hair in your car. That's why it's got seat covers. Nice. I got the manuals for these, I can work on them, but. Look at that thing. You can install them, right? Beautiful. They got the first motor hung on here. They got two bolts on the top there. They got one on the bottom on both sides. And um, up here, they got the pit on there. It's looking pretty good. And these motors are massive. I mean, that's a 425, so this is a really big motor. <laughs> Welcome back. We thought we were gonna do a little taping on it, you know, for the bottom paint, but Andrew, so what about the line from the glue on the wrap there? You can see where all that gummy stuff is there. And we were gonna kind of just leave it on there, but he insisted on taking it off and you can see where it's coming off, so. Since we caught all the mackerels yesterday, he volunteered to help today, right? Yeah, amen. Small price to pay. The edge sealant on the wrap there. And it was heavy here, especially like around all the uh, fittings there, you know? So on all the through holes there, you can see like up here. So we're gonna use this uh, mineral spares to get that off, you know, all up here too, where that gummy stuff is. Chris is up there de-rigging the tower. The motors are hung. Um, they pulled the helms off yesterday, getting new helms and all that stuff, getting a new Yamaha gauge there. 
Is the scraper working? Yeah, dude, look at that. Did it work good? It's taking the, it's taking the bulk of the adhesive yeah, off. Perfect. So we're using a little plastic one, scraper there. And one wipe to finalize it. Awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. So that's what's coming off right there, you guys. And we got some Interlux bottom paint going on there. Eventually in the next few days, not sure exactly when, but we'll show you guys the finished product for sure. Lower units to go on the motors and all that stuff too. The new motors are on, twin 425s, replaced the old 350s. Kirby uh, just double checked everything though, they said everything's running. And I'm excited to see how the boat performs. We're cleaning up the boat now, getting all uh, the mess cleaned up for the boat yard there, and it'll be ready to go. So we are gonna go break in the motors. So we'll have to run the motors two hours, uh, low speed there at first and under 3,900 hours to set it for the second hour. And we'll kind of vary too, but. We started. Started. We're on our way. Thank you. Yeah, man. So, so the first hour under 2,000 RPMs, yeah. and second hour under 3,900. Under 3,900. And kind of keep it just on plane or, or plowing. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. So they had to fill in a couple of spots there on the console, you know, on the dash, because these controls were different size than the other controls. So, got a um, piece of plexiglass right there, and maybe a. Uh, a plastic there, a piece of plastic anyhow right there. Underneath it, over here, that was the old steering gauge there, so that's all gone right there now. And that was the Optimus controller. That's the new gauge here, so I had to put the old plate on there to cover up the hole, because the hole was bigger on that one. And these motors in gear, you know, idling are quiet. And I know when you run, they definitely make probably a little more noise than the old ones, because I have been on a boat sea shuttle before, but like right now, you can barely hear them idling. We're in gear and very quiet. And a lady on the kayak just because I couldn't hear you. She was in the same canal come out there by a Caribbee. I couldn't hear the motor so quiet. I got a brand new, I'm just getting used to them. So let's go break these bad boys in and uh, we will keep you guys updated on how the boat performs. And we may have to play around with the props some because props make a huge difference on any boat, you know, no matter what type it is. It's a 37 Freeman, but uh, may have to adjust the props a little bit. We got a temporary pair on there now and we'll see which pair we wind up going with, you know, after we run these for a few days. And, see what we like about them, what we don't like about them, and where we want to pick up, you know, speed or low end torque, all that stuff that we're getting on plane or whatnot, whatever we need, so. Just idling, you know, just chugging along. I'm at 1600 RPMs. We we're at 1400 for about 10, 15 minutes before this, and that's the first hour, you know, under 2000 is what he said to do there, the dealer, and, uh, and after that, we'll bump it up some, but cruising along here now and see how they work. In the back country of, or the base out here of Almirada. They're sharp looking, so can't wait to see how they run once we open up there. But just want to take our time there, you know, just break them in properly and do all that. So we're in the ocean now. Two more minutes, we'll hit the first hour mark and just been changing the speed, you know, just varying the RPMs from a thousand up to around about 2,000. 10 minutes here, five minutes there, you know, 10 minutes there. You can see how I get a reef behind me, so I'm going to put out there and then I'm going to go, you know, a little bit faster, kind of just get up on plane on off plane right there he said under 3900 so a beautiful afternoon here in Amrata. we're heading fishing tomorrow on the 42 freeman but this has been a project and took a little longer than we had hoped but that's life i mean if you ever take a boat to a boat yard you know more problems arise things come up parts pieces that you need and then the next hour you know we're really interested to see how it runs and how it really does once we get up on plane there so let's bump it up here now a little bit and see where we go 2100 we'll go up here for a while 2500 or so see what happens and i want to see the fuel burn you know if it's the same in the 350s or it's a little bit better i don't think it'll be any worse because it's more adequately 
adequately powered now for this 37 Freeman. The other one was great, you know, that light medium load, but the heavy load is a little on the lower end for power. So we're going to see what happens here. We'll uh, do this for one more hour. Get back to you, maybe show you one or two more little updates, but 2,500 now, you know, right at 10 and a half knots, 11 knots almost. So 3,400 RPM is right around 20 knots. Now uh, here chugging along. So we're up on playing 20 knots, you know, 34, 3,500. We have not, we're gonna keep it under 3,900 out. You know, under 3,900 RPM in the second hour. But it's running along. So there's 3,800 right there. 23, 24 knots. That's like 3,700 right there. 3,800. 23 and a half knots. That's a... We're up off plane, up on the steps there. Running. But looking pretty good so far. They also said, you know, run it there. Where's this right on plane, off the plane kind of barge a little bit. I believe it lets the rings settle there on the pistons and all that stuff. And gets sort of like set there in the motor, so. We'll get back down here, maybe like to 3,000 RPM. Give it a couple minutes there, and then we'll just keep changing the next uh, 45 minutes, then I can open it up and see how it runs. It's been two hours. The braking is complete. Just went to neutral here, and I just went to reverse. And uh, this boat has got some get up and some go in reverse now. I mean, look at that there. So it is moving. But it's the moment we've all been waiting for. We want to see what the cruising speed is, the fuel burn, all that, and see the improvements. So let's jump up on plane here and uh, see how it goes. And we'll head on back to Bud Mary's here in the next couple minutes. So 1400. Here we go. We're up on plane now, 4,100, 25 knots in Clemens, 4,027 knots. We're just gonna try to find that cruise speed on the RPMs here. They'll adjust the props from there, you know, the size of them, the pitch, the cup, all that stuff will get them fine-tuned in, so. Right at 30 knots right now, at 4,200. We are light off fuel, so a little bit lighter than usual. Well, let's see what our fuel burn is. So we're getting a mile per gallon right there. 0.9 to 1. 32 knots right there, picking up a bit.
Well, that wraps it up, you guys. Hope you enjoyed that video. It ran good. The new XDOs are on there. The wrap is off. The boat looks pretty good. Shining. All the fresh bottom paint there from uh, Interlux. So, hope you all enjoyed that video. Hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Like if you want to come on down here to Bud Mary's and go fishing, playing that fish around. They had big blackfin tunas in Oahu today. Matt had tunas and snappers and a sailfish down there, see? So come on down here to Alamara and check it out. Hotel rooms, houseboats stay on, a couple little houses. And uh, if you want any clothing, head to the website, stansfishing.com. That's all we got for you this time. So hope you enjoy the repower. And uh, if we play with the props, I'll update you guys on those. But we're going to run it like this for now and uh, see how it turns out. So here we go. Really? Yeah. Vic, you ever watch one called The Outdoor Boys? Like the young oh, kids? Oh, yeah. Yeah, with a dad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. been on that one. <laughs>